And welcome to the second hour of Bloomberg Now. I'm Ron Madison in Tokyo. Let's get you the rest of the day's headlines right now. BHP and other miners leading Asian stocks lower today. It says crude oil and other commodity prices plunge on concern about falling demand and the rising dollar. Bank of America has confirmed that it plans to pay $3 billion for a stake in China's third largest lender, China Construction Bank. Bloomberg Stephen Engel has been following that story for us. And he joins us now from our Hong Kong studio with the very latest. Steve, what can you tell us? All right, it's down to the wire. Americans choose their next president in just under three weeks from now. Today, they get a third look at the policies and debating skills of the candidates for the November 2nd election. U.S. President George W. Bush and Democratic challenger John Kerry going head to head today. Now, this third and final debate going to focus on uh, economic and domestic a policy. The moderator for today's debate, Bob Schieffer, he uh, is introducing the guests and laying down the ground rules right now. Let's head straight over to Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona for the very latest on this. You heard I was just speaking about this. Uh, two newspapers here in Japan today said the DOJ is considering lowering its reserve target this week. First of all, uh, I want to know, is, is it feasible or reasonable for them to do so? And if it does happen, uh, what kind of impact is this going to be having on the yen? Today, it's uh, really been a day for exporters. They're surging out for a second session. Investors have been focusing on, as you mentioned, the data out of the U.S., data that suggests the U.S. economy is starting to get stronger. Now, we heard uh, overnight U.S. consumer confidence in November rose to 91.7 uh, in November from a revised 81.7 in October. And Big Ron is at the big board with a closer look at what's going on in New Zealand and other markets open at this ungodly hour. Ron. Also, uh, Bernie, want to get started with Australia. They, of course, have joined our trading day. We love it when that happens because then we have a lot more stuff to talk about. There's the ASX 200 up by uh, half a percent as they get their day started. They were watching Telstra today. Australia's biggest phone company uh, will today sell $380 million worth of bonds maturing in April 2015. Well, AFP says Russia is also calling on Syria to quit Lebanon. The news agency reports Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is saying the withdrawal should be made cautiously though. So, all right, well, in New York, get a load of these folks. They were wolfing down Franks, hoping to get a chance to play with the big dogs. The hotly contested semifinal round of the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest got underway uh, in the South Street Seaport in Manhattan. Yes, contestants had to check their manners at the door. They started putting down the dogs by any means necessary uh, to get into the finals on July 4th. New York's own Eric Batlands Booker <laughs> Crown the spot after scarfing down 22 and a half dogs. He's going to face off uh, with uh, four-time champ Japan's Takeru Kobayashi. He's only 144 pounds, uh, Bernie, but he put down 53 hot dogs and buns last year in 12 minutes. In case you're wondering, Miss Manners was not invited to the contest. <laughs> Well, Japanese stocks are falling today, led by resources companies. The Nikkei 225 uh, has finished out the morning session lower by just about two-tenths of a percent. We're seeing losses of three-tenths of a percent for the broader market. AOC Holdings and Nippon Mining are down on slumping commodity prices, including oil and copper. Bloomberg's Shobi Pereira joins us from the Tokyo Stock Exchange with a roundup of this morning's session. Shobi, how did it look? Welcome back to Bloomberg. Now, everyone, let's get a reminder of the stories that we're following for you today on Bloomberg. Asian equities fall, led by resources stocks. Commodity prices slump as demand in China and Europe slows and gains in the dollar. Hike the price of raw materials. Oil drops to its cheapest in just about three months. Gains in the dollar and an increase in U.S. stockpiles since crude below $49 a barrel. Dell now it says that first quarter profits were up by just about a third. Shares uh, did uh, get a boost in after hours trading. Investors say the world's biggest personal computer maker may beat analyst estimates this quarter. Net income totaled $934 million, uh, works out to 37 cents a share. Sales, meantime, were up 16 percent. Rising demand overseas and growing sales of more profitable notebooks and printer supplies all helped to boost profit, discounting is eroding earnings at its traditional desktop PC business. PC sales now account for 40% of Dell's revenue. That's down four percentage points from just a year ago. Dell's chief financial officer says the trend is going to continue. 
Well, Microsoft has just unveiled its latest game console. The new Xbox is aimed at winning market share from Sony's best-selling PlayStation. Mike Fern is with us now. He's got a closer look at this. They're going to try to win market share from PlayStation. Well, you saw commodity prices plunge the most in seven weeks. Traders uh, concerned now that demand in uh, growth in China is starting to slow down a bit and that a rally in the dollar has been boosting the cost of raw materials for importers. The Reuters CRB index of 17 commodities fell the most since March 23rd. That was led by declines in copper and oil. David Thurtell joins us now for more on this. He's a commodities strategist at Commonwealth Bank of Australia. David, very good to see you today. Uh, first of all, what do you think is going on here? Uh, what were the reasons for the recent sell-off in copper, oil, and gold futures that we saw? Of course, you know, analysts now saying it's not a question of if, but when China revalues its currency. And uh, there's also been some concern about central banks diversifying their dollar assets. Uh, what does this all mean for the dollar's prospects and uh, the impact on commodity prices? Okay, David. It's very good to get your thoughts on this today. Thanks so much for being with us. I've been speaking with David Thurtell from Commonwealth Bank. Commodity and chip-related stocks that are leading the Japanese market higher today. The Nikkei is about half a percent higher at this time. The broader market topics, just about seven-tenths of a percent higher as we head into the lunch break. Bloomberg's Shobi Pereira joins us from the Tokyo Stock Exchange to see how our Friday morning is shaping up. Shobi. Well, let's see uh, what's going on around the rest of the region. We've got Hong Kong's unemployment rate falling unexpectedly to 5.7% last month. Bloomberg's Gino Tani has uh, got a look at how that's been moving stocks on the Hang Seng, as well as a look around the region for us. Hi there, Gene. All right, Gene, thank you very much. Got the euro now heading for its third weekly decline against the dollar. Traders are concerned European Union policymakers won't resolve differences over the region's budget and constitution. EU leaders on Thursday put ratification of the European constitution on hold. They've clashed over the union's budget with the UK and the Netherlands saying they may veto the spending plan. Well, still concerns over the U.S. current account deficit may limit any losses in the euro. A report later today may show the deficit widening to a record $190 billion in the first quarter of this year. Oil futures uh, trading near an 11-week high with crude uh, for July delivery. Crude oil is trading near an 11-week high. Now, there are some signs that surge in global fuel consumption will strain the production capacity of OPEC and other exporters. Bloomberg Street Jagaraja joins us now from Singapore with the very latest on what's happening uh, today with oil. Very good day to you, Sri. Uh, what are investors telling you now oil. about uh, uh, the supply situation so far this morning? New World Development says that it's open to offers for its mobile phone unit. The company, which is one of Hong Kong's biggest real estate developers, owns 72% of New World Mobile Holdings. That unit claims to have 1.3 million subscribers, and that makes it Hong Kong's second or third largest operator. The statement raises the possibility of further consolidation in the city's cellular market. It follows as well PCCW's plan to buy control of Sunday communications. Well, Taiwan's third biggest wireless company, Far East Tone, says sales may rise 5% this year. That would outpace the industry's expansion as people use uh, data services a bit more. Far East Tone also expects profit to rise this year, boosted by contributions from KG Telecoms, and that is a rival that it uh, picked up back in April. Aiko Wakao caught up with the company's president, Jan Nilsson, at the Communication Expo in Singapore, and she asked him how exactly this merger has helped to boost Far East Tone's business. Right, that is... Democrats' man of the hour, the man that they're hoping will be their man uh, for the next uh, four years. In fact, John Kerry's acceptance speech uh, for the Democratic presidential nomination, capping what's uh, really been a four-day pep rally there for the Democrats. John Kerry speaking to an estimated crowd of some 15,000 party faithful there at the Fleet Center, not to mention the uh, nationwide uh, audience that this was broadcast to. Just about 15 minutes into what was just shy of a one-hour speech. John Kerry told the audience, I accept your nomination. He had some pretty high accolades for his running mate, John Edwards, who he said was ready to replace Dick Cheney. Taking a bit of a jab at Cheney, he said uh, his vice president won't see polluters in secret meetings. As well, uh, John Kerry said he'd never mislead Americans into war. He said, saying there are weapons of mass destruction doesn't make it so. He says under his administration, the U.S would be stronger and respected in the world. Kerry says he will restore trust and credibility to the White House uh, now. And what started becoming a bit of a mantra as well uh, there for Kerry, he uh, said that uh, 
America can do better, and he says that help is on the way. Now, Kerry said President George W. Bush did rely on faulty intelligence to support his case for going to Iraq. He also accused Bush of neglecting the military by failing to equip soldiers with body armor. Now, Bush's campaign has already reacted to the speech, saying the Democrat has changed his positions on military and security issues. And there has been the uh, highlight of the Democratic National Convention from Boston, Massachusetts. That's well, less than three Arizona weeks State left to go. University Pretty much uh, all that's left now is for voters to make up their minds and cast their ballots. Today's debate at Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona, the last chance for the candidates to try to convince voters to punch their names on the ballots come uh, November 2nd. There. Now, the debate focused on the economy, homeland security, as well as uh, other domestic issues. Within the first 60 seconds, though, Democratic challenger John Kerry shifted the focus to the war in Iraq when he said, quote, this president regrettably rushed us into war, made decisions about foreign policy, pushed alliances away, and as a result, America is now bearing this extraordinary burden where we are not as safe as we ought to be. Kerry promised to free up uh, more money to help create jobs by working more with allies to stabilize Iraq. Well, attention that uh, did turn to domestic issues. Bob Schieffer moderated the debate. He tried to help voters get a glimpse of the candidate's ideology by asking questions about views on homosexuality, religious faith, and uh, hot-button issues like affirmative action and abortion. Health care, social security, education reform were all issues there. George Bush accused uh, Kerry of uh, being, quote, out of the mainstream on taxes, spending, and health care. Kerry said the president ballooned the deficit as far as the eye can see. Now, they also talked about illegal immigration as well, which is a big issue there in the state of Arizona since it borders Mexico. The candidates were hoping to make quite an impression there in a state, a poll in the state. A poll released uh, last week by one of the state's dailies, the Arizona Republic, shows Bush leads Kerry 48 to 38 percent in the state, 13 percent of the voters there, though, say that they're still undecided. If those statistics hold up, it could make Arizona a swing state in this election. That state did give its 10 electoral votes to Bush, though, back in the 2000 election. Well, nationwide, Bush and Kerry are in a dead heat with 20 days left to go to the election. That's according to polls released uh, in the last two days by CBS News, ABC News, uh, Washington Post, Reuters, Zogby, and et al. In the Gallup poll, uh, voters said Kerry would handle uh, nine issues, such as the U.S. budget deficit, the economy, and health care, better than the president. The very issues that uh, the candidates did address today, Bush led Kerry by a 17 percentage point margin when voters were asked who would best handle terrorism. Now, by a seven percentage point margins, voters gave Bush the nod on taxes and the war in Iraq. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up our coverage of this third and final presidential debate. But please stay with Bloomberg for the latest updates in the days leading up to the campaign, uh, as well as full coverage of the election. Well, AFP says Russia is also calling on Syria to quit Lebanon. The news agency reports Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is saying the withdrawal should be made cautiously, though. Well, a Jakarta court will decide today if Muslim cleric Abu Bakar Bashir is guilty of inciting people to carry out deadly terrorist bombings in Southeast Asia. Bashir faces a sentence of as much as eight years in prison. Bashir is an emir associated with Jamaat Islamiya. That group is an al-Qaeda-linked terrorist group in Southeast Asia. The cleric's lawyers deny that he has any role in terrorism, though. They say the U.S. government made up the charges. Bashir was first arrested in October 2002. It was in connection with the Bali nightclub bombings that killed 202 people. Well, North Korea demanding an apology from the United States for calling the communist country one of the outposts of tyranny. Associated Press reports is also threatening now to end a 1999 moratorium on testing long-range missiles. North Korea also stated in a memorandum that the U.S. needed to renounce what it called its hostile policy aimed at a regime change. Well, the memo said Pyongyang would take part in Six Nation talks aimed at ending its nuclear weapons program if the United States created an atmosphere that was conducive to those talks. Well, North Korea did announce last month that it had nuclear weapons. Bernie, that is the very latest look at world news. It's back over to you. Well, he doesn't even own a football team, but Russian President Vladimir Putin has a Super Bowl ring. Well, the jury's still out on this, though. The Russian president walked off with the diamond-encrusted 2005 ring that belongs to New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft. It happened after a meeting of American business executives uh, and Putin near St. Petersburg on Saturday. Kraft showed the ring to Putin, who tried it on, and thank you very much, put it in his pocket and left. Uh, Bernie, they're still trying to figure out 
if it was intended to be a gift or not. We'll find out soon, I guess. <laughs> Oops. Hey there, Gene. Uh, just down off the highs that we've seen for this session, we've been up as high as 10,133, so you can see we're just down uh, a bit from that. Today, it's uh, really been a day for exporters. They're surging out for us second session investors have been focusing on as you mentioned the data out of the u.s data that suggests the u.s economy is starting to get stronger now we heard uh, overnight u.s consumer confidence in november rose to 91.7 uh, in november from a revised 81.7 in october also third quarter gross domestic product in the u.s rising at an annual rate of 8.2 percent from an initial reading of 7.2 percent so as you can imagine it's been spreading a lot of cheer to the region's exporters including japanese automakers we see as a group uh, right now, they're uh, continuing to be one of the best performers on the topics, up as a group right now by about uh, two and a half percent uh, gains for uh, all three of the uh, big automakers, including Honda, which is up by two percent right now. Toyota gaining by almost two percent. Uh, Nissan up by uh, more than three and a half percent. These are, of course, companies that do much of their business abroad, uh, namely in the U.S. Toyota gets just about eighty percent of its operating profit from North America. Now, Honda's uh, Japan's second largest automaker by sales. It's uh, said today that global production uh, increased in October. It was boosted by output in North America and Asia. Uh, Honda is saying that it uh, made some 269,000 vehicles worldwide in October, and that's up 6.8% from a year ago. Nissan, though, the big winner in all this, uh, pulling ahead among Japanese automakers, it said it increased overseas production by 26%. Toyota, meantime, uh, saying that uh, it has gained uh, by 25%. So this could also be adding uh, to some of the gains that we're seeing with the automakers today. And now, tech-related exporters also uh, pulling ahead for a second session, the electric Electric Machinery Industry Group is uh, higher today by about 1.5%. Canon, Sony, and Fujitsu among the rising stocks there. Now, we, of course, heard from the nation's biggest lenders that they rebounded from record losses in the first half. Mizuho and its three closest competitors guessing they'll earn a combined 1.2 trillion yen this fiscal year. That works out to just about $11.2 billion. Now, we saw banks rebound as they benefit from the nation's longest expansion since 1997, which is enabling more borrowers to pay debt. It helps uh, fight the bad loans problem problem as uh, well as other things uh, associated with uh, what we've been seeing with the banks. So we've got uh, uh, most of the lenders higher today. UFJ Holdings is lower though. That's how it's looking for today, Gene. Back to you. Well, Kathy, as you can see there, a bit of a recovery for the markets. Uh, banks uh, were really the pull as we opened up the session, but now, uh, while the Nikkei is a little changed, we've seen it go into green, then back to red, then back to green, so it's kind of bouncing around a bit. Uh, this morning, we do have some communication stocks hitting higher. NTT Docomo, the world's second largest cell phone operator, said it spent 47.4 billion yen to buy back its own stock from shareholders. The company says it bought back the shares between November 17th and November 28th. Now, as a group, we're seeing communications, uh, the best Best performer on the topics right now, up by eight tenths of a percent. Uh, Docomo and NTT both heading higher. Docomo up by one and a quarter percent. Its parent NTT up by about a percent right now. now these are uh, some of the nation's more heavily weighted stocks, so they do tend to have quite a pull or push on the market depending on which way they're going. And Big Ron is at the big board with a closer look at what's going on in New Zealand and other markets open at this ungodly hour. Ron. Also, uh, Bernie, want to get started with Australia. They, of course, have joined our trading day. We love it when that happens because then we have a lot more stuff to talk about. There's the ASX 200 up by uh, half a percent as they get their day started there. We're watching Telstra today. Australia's biggest phone company uh, will today sell $380 million worth of bonds maturing in April 2015. It is the company's first debt raising in the domestic market in more than two years. You know, Telstra uh, has really been raising money after Chief Executive Officer Ziggy Switzkowski uh, pledged in June to return $4.5 billion Australian dollars to the company's $1.5 7 million shareholders over the next three years. Telstra uh, higher this morning early on by just about two tenths of a percent. I uh, also want to let you know that uh, shares of Coca-Cola Amatil have been halted this morning. This comes as Australia's biggest soft drink maker considers a transaction that may affect its stock price. We aren't getting any details about uh, that transaction at this point. Uh, suffice it to say, though, right now, uh, trading is halted. We'll keep you posted on what's going on with this. Also uh, watching Rio Tinto and WMC Resources today, the Age News reporting that Rio may bid for WMC Resources. Uh, Rio already agreed this week to sell a half stake in a Brazilian mine for $260 million. Rio's latest sale adds uh, to the sum $1 billion it received early this year from the sale of non-core assets. So the company's strengthening balance sheet uh, has been prompting a bit of speculation about what the company is going to do with all that cash right now. We're seeing Rio Tinto is higher this morning already by 1.5%.